Welcome to another immigration art video. My name is Art Saratelli, and along with Mara Mial, the two of us, we run the Immigration Law Group. Our law group is a nationwide full-service law group. We've got clients all over the United States and all over the world. If you've got a question about any type of immigration issue, contact us. Send us an email or give us a call. If you've got a question, we've got an answer. Today's video deals with the topic of showing up in America. How do I do it? We get emails all the time from young people. I mean, I mean young kids like in middle school or high school. Hey, Art, how can I just come to America with, and get permanent residency? And working adults also from all parts of the world contact us and they say, Hey, Art, um, I've got a job at XYZ company and I've got this level of education. How do I show up and get a green card? Those are good questions. Those are frequently asked questions. The answers, however, are not that simple. So, here we go. Concept number one. It is rare that you can just, quote, show up and have a green card and permanent residency. Permanent residency is another way to say green card. Green card and permanent residency, they're both another way to say immigrant status. They all mean the same thing. You're leaving your home country and you want to stay permanently in America. I have a separate video on five ways to get permanent residency. Concept number two. If you're in another country outside the United States and you just want to show up and come in with permanent resident status, that means you would have had to have gotten an immigrant visa at the United States Embassy before arriving. The only way you can do that, again, check out that video about the five ways to get a green card or an immigrant visa. The immigrant visa is only going to be issued to you if you've married an American citizen, if you've been waiting for years and years and years in your home country because a relative like a sister or a mom or a dad, somebody sponsored you, a relative, but that's a relative, not your spouse, or if you won the diversity green card lottery, or if you're waiting overseas for a green card based on a job. And that takes a long time, too. Sometimes a couple years, sometimes 10 years. So it's rare to just show up with a green card. Let's, let's talk about the way it normally works. Concept number three. Basically, you need to get to America in a lawful way. And there's two popular ways to do this. One is if you're a student coming to America to study from overseas. And the other way is through a job, through an offer of employment. Now, there are other ways. Like, for example, you can come here as a visitor. And then while you're here, you change your mind and you want to enroll in college. Then you go from visitor, temporary beachhead, temporary holding pattern, to F1 student, or another way, you come in as a visitor, and you meet a nice uh, young man or a nice young lady, and you're in love, and then you go from thinking, I was only coming here to visit, to, well, I'm a human, I'm allowed to change my mind. I know I wanted to only visit when I crossed the border, but now I fell in love. I am crazy nuts in love. I'm gonna get on a plane from Wichita, Kansas, where I met my true love, fly to Vegas and get married by a minister dressed as Elvis Presley. But let's forget that for right now. Let's forget that. And let's focus on, first, 
coming here temporarily as a student. Let's do that. Concept number four, coming to America as a student. The student status, and I really mean it. I, it, it, it's a humbling experience to be contacted by young people in grade school. They're in seventh, eighth, ninth grade. I get emails all the time, and I want to help. And if the kids are thinking this long term, God bless them. Here's the story. You come for college or for high school as a student. The problem is you need money. In America, money, 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 money. So if you can afford to come here as a student, do it. How does that work? How do you get the temporary student visa to establish your base of operations, your beachhead, from which you then enter the U.S. immigration system on your way to a green card? How do you do it? One, you get accepted to a United States educational institution. If you want to go to high school, find a program in your country that gets you the F1. Don't get a J. Please, no J. And if you get a J, call me first before you sign on the dotted line. A J, if you do it wrong, a J can mess up your life. So get an F1. Get one through some agency or some program in your country. Come for high school. Or go to an international study abroad fair and come for college. The school or the agency will get you the paperwork you need to then take to the American embassy to get the visa for student, F1 student visa. Okay, so you come in and you study. And then while you're here, you say to yourself, self, I know that I came in temporarily to study and then after I'm studying and I'm done and I take my final exams, I go home, but I love it here. This is cool. This is great. This is fun. So you're allowed to change your mind because you're a human being and you go from F1 student and if you're in high school, you extend your student status and go to college. If you're in college, you graduate and there's something called optional practical training. You get to stay as a student for an extra year after you finish studying, you get to stay an extra year as a student, even though you're done studying, and you get to work full time for at least a year. If you study science, technology, engineering, or math, you can stay for a year plus 17 months equals 29 months. And as of the date I'm filming this video, President Obama is floating ideas. Uh, so who knows? Then, 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 you take the OPT F1 as a bridge between school F1 and a work visa. And a work visa. Take a look at this slide because you'll see that after the work visa, then comes the green card based on a job. So you see how that worked? Particularly, particularly you, you young people in middle school, you're planning for a job that's going to get you a work visa and a green card after college. Amazing that you're thinking that far ahead. So take a look at this slide. Okay, for all you students out there, can you just show up? in America with a permanent residence? Unlikely. What do you have to do? It's a sequence of events. You come, as a, come in as an F1, go to high school. Or come in as an F1, go to college. If you came in as a high school student, you get an F1, you go to college. Then when you get out of college, there's this interim period where you're a student, but you're working 40 hours a week. You take your OPT, which is temporary, and you turn that into a temporary work visa. Now you went from studying in the books to temporarily working as a student to working temporarily with a visa. And then based on that job, you get the green card.
and all the resources in America will help you get a job. You got a better chance of getting a job if you've been in our society using the resources available here. Concept number five. Pretend you're an adult working overseas somewhere and you want to come to America based on employment. You're a married man or a woman. You can't marry an American because your spouse doesn't let you go out on dates, correct? And maybe you have children. So you're coming as a family or you're coming as a single person. Either way, but you're in business and you've been to college. So what you've got to do is come to America based on a job. Now let's look at that slide again I showed you earlier. Okay, because we're now talking about coming here directly for work, in this slide now just focus on the work visa to green card transition and focus on the box in the lower right hand corner. The box in the lower right hand corner shows you all the work visa choices you have you pick one of those that's appropriate for your job offer and with that visa you then show up in America in the right status for the job offer you're arriving with. Okay, now that slide shows you the grown-up coming to America starts with the work visa. That's where you start and that's why I've got all those purple choices for work visas listed there because there's a lot of choices. There's a lot of choices and don't get hung up on this lousy, no good H-1B that's limited by a quota. The H-1B used to be when Bill Clinton was the president, the best available choice. We had 195,000 in the quota, thanks to Bill Clinton. I miss Bill Clinton. We had 195,000 and we never ran out. Now, in 2015, this year, your odds of getting an H-1B was every one person out of three. One out of three got an H-1B visa because of the quota. No good. Don't let a lawyer sell you on the H-1B as the only choice because they're full of baloney. Baloney. And as of the date of this video, H-1B, cap exempt, lottery exempt, quota exempt H-1Bs. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Look at my chart again and see all the various visa choices for work. They're in purple. Look at them. Google them. Find out about them. Or look at my immigration art video channel to hear me talk about all of them. And then call me or email me with questions. Um, so your goal as a grown-up who's married or single but you've been to college and no more college, you can come based on employment, either with a corporation in America, um, a family-owned company maybe in America, or you start your own company in America and co co come as an entrepreneur. Um, and I have v videos about entrepreneurial ventures that result in lawful status in America. That's basically the message today. You can't just show up. You got to have a sequence of events. So that's the traditional pattern. And in my humble opinion, do not fight City Hall. There are other ways to do this, but if you're going to rely, if, for example, if you're from the Philippines and you want to get here and you have a brother or a sister who's a U.S. citizen and they sponsor you, you're going to be in line for like 20 years, 20 years. You can go get a PhD and become the president of Harvard in 20 years. No, don't do that. Don't fight City Hall. Give us a call.